All right, so in this video, we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x. So how do we actually determine the answer to this limit? Well, one way in which we could do so is by using the unit circle. So imagine we have the unit circle. And it turns out we're only going to need to consider the first quadrant of the unit circle. And you'll see why at the end of this derivation. So imagine we have some angle theta, and I'm going to call this point O, this point A, this point B. I'm going to drop a perpendicular from point A down to the x-axis. I'm going to draw a segment connecting point A and point B. And I'm going to draw a line tangent to the circle at point B, like this. Now, if you recall, a line tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to the point of tangency. So that means those two must be perpendicular. If we continue extending this segment, it will eventually intersect with that line we just drew. I'll call this point of intersection point Q. I'll call this one point P. So overall, this diagram has four individual area pieces. Area 1 is the area of this triangle. Area 2 is the area of this triangle. Area 3 is the area bounded by segment AB and arc AB. Area 4 is the area bounded by arc AB and these two segments. Now, it's pretty obvious that the area of 1 and 2 combined is smaller than the area of 1, 2, and 3 combined, which is smaller than the area of 1, 2, 3, and 4 combined. And I've denoted that symbolically right here. So we know for a fact that this is true. But what are these areas in terms of theta? That's the next step. Starting with the area of 1 and 2 combined, what is this area in terms of theta? Well, the area of 1 and 2 is really just the area of this triangle right here. And the area of a triangle is just 1 half base times height. And the base of this triangle is OB, the height is PA. So then, what are OB and PA? Well, OB is the radius of the circle. But since this is the unit circle, the radius is 1. Therefore, OB is equal to 1. Now, to determine what PA is, if you recall, the coordinates of a point on the unit circle is given by cosine theta comma sine theta by definition. So that's what the coordinates of this point is. Cosine theta comma sine theta because this point is created by this angle theta. And PA represents the height of this point, but we can also think of PA as representing the y coordinate of this point. So PA is equal to sine theta. As a result, the area of 1 and 2 combined is just 1 half sine theta. So now we have the area of 1 and 2 combined. Now we are going to determine the area of 1, 2, and 3 combined. But really, the area of 1, 2, and 3 combined is just the area of this circular sector. Now, if you recall, the area of a circular sector is a fraction of the area of the circle that that sector is in. In this case, the area of the unit circle. So then, what is that fraction? What fraction of the unit circle is this sector? Well, that fraction depends on the angle. And if we assume this angle is in radians, it's going to be theta out of the full 2 pi radians in the circle. So this is what it is. Notice that the pi's cancel out, so we're left with 1 half theta r squared. But really, the radius of our circle is just 1. Because, again, this is the unit circle. The radius is 1. And therefore, the area of 1, 2, and 3 combined is just 1 half theta. So now, we have the area of 1, 2, and 3 combined. So now, the last thing we have to do is find the area of 1, 2, 3, and 4 combined. But really, the area of 1, 2, 3, and 4 combined is really just the area of this triangle. And again, the area of a triangle is 1 half base times height, where the base of this triangle is OB, the height is BQ. And so what are OB and BQ? Well, again, 
OB represents the radius of our circle, which we know is just 1. But what's BQ? That is to say, what is this length? How do we figure that out? Well, to figure out this length, we have to relate it to this angle theta. Since theta is in quadrant 1, we know for a fact that theta has to be an acute angle, meaning that the right triangle definitions from trigonometry apply. So we could say that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. That works. And so we could therefore say tangent of theta is PA over OP or tangent of theta equals BQ over OB. It's going to be more useful if we say that the tangent of theta is BQ over OB. And as we've been saying, OB is equal to 1. Therefore, tangent of theta equals BQ. So that is what BQ is. It's equal to the tangent of theta. And therefore, the area of 1, 2, 3, and 4 combined is just 1 half tangent theta. So now we have determined all three of these areas in terms of theta. So we know exactly how to re-express this inequality in terms of theta. So now we're just going to substitute these three things with what we have here. So we know for a fact that this inequality holds true. But remember, this was based on an angle in the first quadrant, which means theta must be somewhere between 0 and pi over 2 in order for this inequality to hold. And we have to have it in radians because this area is based on theta in radians. So that's really the way it works. So we know for a fact that this inequality holds true, and we're going to use this inequality to evaluate this limit. The limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0. But for our purposes, it's going to be the limit of sine theta over theta as theta approaches 0. Right, so that's really the way it works. So we're going to move back up to the top and rewrite this inequality up here. So our goal at this point is to get sine theta over theta involved with this inequality. So then how do we do that? Well, check this out. First thing we can do is we can divide each of these three things by one half. That'll cause the one halves to go away. So we know for a fact that this is true as well. The next thing that we can do is we can divide each of these three things by sine theta. And the reason why we're allowed to do this is because sine theta can never equal zero. That is, for all angles theta between zero and pi over two, sine theta never equals zero. It's always positive. And therefore, we're always dividing by a positive number, and that's perfectly fine. When we're dividing by a positive number, that's not going to cause the direction of the inequality to change. So these are going to remain the same exact way. As a result, sine theta over sine theta is 1. Theta over sine theta is just theta over sine theta. Tan theta over sine theta, well, that's a little bit more complicated, right? We're going to have to do a little bit of analysis, right? I like that word, analysis. Well, we know that tangent of theta is just sine over cosine. And dividing by sine theta is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over sine theta. Notice the sine thetas cancel out, and you're left with 1 over cosine theta. And so that's exactly what this becomes, 1 over cosine theta. So this is what our inequality is. Notice we have theta over sine theta. But we want sine theta over theta. We want to flip the numerator and denominator. So what if we do that? Well, this inequality is just like this inequality. Because imagine if we were to flip the numerator and denominator of each of these three things. This is what we would get. But if we do this, this is now greater than this, which is greater than this. So the less than or equal to becomes greater than or equal to. So whenever you flip the numerator and denominator of the terms in inequality, it's just going to simply change the direction of the inequality. And so if we do exactly what we're doing here to what we're doing here, all we're going to do is flip the numerator and denominator of each of these things. But just like what happened here, 
the less than or equal to is going to become greater than or equal to. And so that's really how it works. But one over one is just one. Cosine theta over one is just cosine theta. So this is our inequality. And this inequality is equivalent to this. And remember that this inequality holds true for theta between zero and pi over two. So nothing changed about this. However, it turns out that this inequality is not just true for theta between zero and pi over two, but it's also true for theta between negative pi over two and zero. But why? Why is this inequality also true from negative pi over two to zero? Because all of the functions in this inequality are even functions. What's an even function? An even function is a function that is symmetrical about the y-axis. So what that means is, is if this inequality holds true on the right side of the y-axis, then it must also hold true on the left side of the y-axis because it's symmetry. That's what's really cool about this. And so with this information, we have enough information to use the squeeze theorem to evaluate the limit of this function as theta approaches zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the squeeze theorem. Right? We can apply the squeeze theorem because we know that this inequality is true for all values between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, except maybe theta equals 0. Well, we're going to use that to our advantage to evaluate the limit of this thing as theta approaches 0. Well, it turns out that the limit of cosine theta as theta approaches 0 and the limit of 1 as theta approaches 0 are the same thing. They're both equal to 1. And since both of these limits are equal to 1, that means the limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta is also equal to 1. And therefore, we have evaluated the limit that we were trying to evaluate. And that's really the whole idea, right? Sine theta over theta is squeeze, I love the word, squeeze, between these two functions for all values of theta between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. And that's what's really cool about this, right? So cool, right? That's probably what you're thinking right now. Like, wow, oh my god, that is so cool, right? And so, yeah, this is basically it for this video.